Britain is building a mine in plain sight, but you wouldn't know it. It's the Woodsmith Polyhalite Mine. Sounds new, right? As the name indicates, Woodsmith is a polyhalite mine under construction just two miles south of Whitby in North York Moors National Park. Once completed, it'll be the deepest mine in Europe with the longest tunnel in Britain. The polyhalite is deposited 5,250 feet below ground with an estimated size of 2.69 billion tons. This makes it the largest polyhalite deposit in the world. Thus, it's safe to say that the UK has hit the jackpot as this construction project can bring an estimated revenue of 100 billion pounds over a period of 50 years. So, what exactly is this mega project all about? And why has it caused a stir in the fertilizer industry all of a sudden? To answer this, we first need to understand what's polyhalite and the advantages it offers over other forms of potash fertilizers. Polyhalite is a naturally occurring mineral that contains potassium, sulfur, magnesium, and calcium, plus traces of numerous micronutrients, making it an ideal natural fertilizer. Once it's extracted, it'll be crushed and granulated to form poly-4, a multinutrient low-chloride fertilizer. With the expected growth of the population by 2050 and the subsequent effect of over-farming, the capacity of arable lands is decreasing. This has pushed farmers and agricultural experts to find more sustainable solutions to increase the fertility of the soil. As mentioned before, the polyhalites directly extracted and crushed without the need for chemical processing. For this reason, it has a lower carbon footprint in contrast to conventional fertilizers. To prove this, Anglo-American, the company spearheading this super mine, carried out 3,500 agronomic studies and 1,800 plus demonstrations to back their claims. These studies tested polyhalite's efficiency against other potassium-based fertilizers on broad acre and high value crops. The results were nothing but astonishing. They consistently show that poly-4 outperformed in terms of crop yield and quality. Executives at Anglo-Americans are desperate to market it as an alternative to MOP or simply potassium chloride. Will the poly-4 find a league of its own in an industry that's rigid to change? Only time will tell. However, this doesn't stop the enthusiasm of the mining giant Anglo-American who's aiming for it to be operational by 2027. What's even more surprising is that most people in the industry believe that this Giga project would never be built. If you looked at it a few years ago, you would think the same. This mine was originally owned by Sirius Minerals, which started its construction in May of 2017. Their aim was to complete it by 2021. Woodsmith got its name from two geologists named Peter Woods and Dr. Frederick Smith who were working on the project. Sirius's financial troubles began in 2019 when it was scrambling to raise $600 million to fund its first phase of construction. The company's share price dropped drastically by 50%, giving them a hard time to continue at the same pace. In 2020, Anglo-Americans made an offer of 400 million pounds to purchase it from Sirius who agreed in desperation. With a new team and a new vision, Anglo-American took a completely different approach in terms of engineering and marketing. However, it's not the only company mining polyhalite. Israel Chemicals Bulby is another big name in this game. They are also situated near Woodsmith and sell the mineral globally under the name polysulfate. Once the Woodsmith mine becomes operational, it'll completely outstrip its competitor. These mineral deposits were formed when an ancient sea dried up around 260 million years ago. Polyhalite was discovered in the 1930s when Whitby was being investigated for possible reserves of oil and gas. It wasn't until 2011 that some serious thought was given about mining polyhalite. After the Northmore National Park authorities approved the initial proposal, test drilling was done at various sites along the coast between Whitby and Scarborough. The subsequent geological survey discovered the world's largest and highest grade polyhalite resource. Due to the vast reserves of polyhalite, it's expected that this potash mine will have a life expectancy of 100 years and has been labeled as Britain's supermine. This is not without its fair share of criticism. Since the mining site's located at the heart of a national park, many are concerned about its impact on the environment. The York National Park's a scenic location with impressive cliffs, tall grass, and wide stretches of beautiful land. To counter this, the project's visibility is minimized. All major infrastructure at Woodsmith will be sunk below ground so that when the mine's completed, no equipment will be visible. This means there will be no giant winding towers that disturb the natural beauty of the land. Towers would be sunk in 200-foot deep chambers to make them completely invisible to a passerby. This is completely unusual for mining fields which typically have tall head frames in place to lift machinery and people. Even if you try to look at Woodsmith mine from the air using a helicopter or a drone, the area will give you the illusion of a farm. They even built a curve at the access site, so anyone driving by would only see woodland. Let's walk through this insane engineering required to extract the ore from a 5,250-foot deep seam and turn it into a refined poly-4 fertilizer. In a nutshell, two twin shafts will be constructed to bring polyhalite to the surface. 
It'll then be transported via a conveyor belt underground to a material processing facility in Wilton. The Wilton Industrial Complex is 23 miles away, so the extracted ore has to be transported outside Yorkshire Park. In this way, there's no added complexity of storage, pollution, or huge trucks to carry the raw material to the facility. Once the polyhalite's granulated at the facility, it'll be exported overseas through the port which is only 2.5 miles away. There are two underground shafts, the service and the production shaft. The service shaft is 5,250 feet deep to provide access to workers to the pit button of the polyhalite seam. The head frames at the top of the shafts, which hoist workers and materials up and down, are hidden in 140 foot deep, 115 foot wide four shafts to reduce surface visual impact. Interestingly, the same shaft isn't used to transport the polyhalite. There's a parallel production shaft running from the pit bottom to the mineral transport system. The mineral transport system is located 1,200 feet below ground. Its purpose was to collect the extracted polyhalite and load it onto a conveyor belt 23 miles long. This conveyor belt efficiently transports the minerals to Teesside where the mineral handling facility is located. A 20-foot diameter tunnel boring machine is being used to create a passage all the way from Wilton to Wyth Bay. The 16-foot wide tunnel is lined with concrete to create a reinforced path that doesn't collapse under pressure of the soil above it. Another added advantage is the fact that the Wilton site also has a cement manufacturing plant. Hence, all the cement required to line the tunnel doesn't have to come from a far-flung place. The first TBM has been entered from a surface portal at Wilton. The head of the TBM is a sharp rock-cutting disc that progressively chips away the soil. It's important to note that the cutting action isn't continuous. After some meters, the TBM stops temporarily to line the surface of the tunnel with cement. Once the ground is secured, it moves forward to drill the rest. The debris of the drilled rock falls into the machine itself which is transported to the surface via a conveyor belt inside. This innovation has made the whole process almost hands-free as far as drilling is concerned. The construction of the tunnel occurs in segments. Just as one TBM is inserted from Wilton, another will be inserted at Withby. The only difference is that the latter can't be transported as a whole due to the limited area of the shaft. To overcome this problem, the parts of TBM are lowered down through the transportation shaft where it's assembled to be operated. This TBM is assigned to excavate the remaining 15 miles out of the 23 miles. In this fashion, both TBM meet in between, marking the end of the excavation. Both machines are disassembled and brought to the surface to make way for the conveyor belt to be installed. Once the conveyor belt's been put in place, it'll transport millions of tons of polyhalite at a speed of 6.5 meters a second. The conveyor belt doesn't stop at any point during its journey and only sees the daylight when it reaches its station, the handling facility. Upon its arrival at Wilton, it's temporarily stored in the shed. From there onwards, the polyhalite goes through several stages to be turned into a poly-4 fertilizer capable of being transported, or from the conveyor belts brought to the surge bin where it's crushed, milled, and then forwarded to the screening facility. At the screening facility, oversized ore will be separated and sent back for further crushing while the remaining ore will be forwarded to the granulation area for conversion into pellets followed by drying. The final product will be covered and transported via conveyor bridges to the red car bulk terminal for export to customers. For Anglo-American, the key markets include Brazil, the US, and Europe. The key step, however, is to convince farmers in those targeted markets to use Poly-4 for their crops, either as the main or as the supplemental fertilizer. Given the already existing stress on cultivated land, it is possible to see a major shift from conventional chemical fertilizers to relatively more organic poly-4. It offers benefits beyond its nutritional value by creating a stronger soil structure with a more favorable environment for soil biology, improving erosion and nutrient leaching. Do you think the mine will have a lifespan of 100 years? And what do you think is the most impressive engineering used in building the mine? Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to know more updates regarding the polyhalite mine and other visionary builds. We'll see you on the next one.